And I'm like, oops. Phone rang and it was for a photo shoot, editorial photo shoot, which we got a lot of. And we specialized in that uh, because the other film car companies, the bigger ones than us, they had a fleet of cabs and cop cars. They did a lot of the movies, but they didn't really have time for these one car, two car editorial shoots. And we loved them because it was a 10 or 12 hour shoot where you just kind of sat and babysat a car in a room and had fantastic craft services and there were models there and it was really rough. So we get a call and they want a standard Crown Vic New York City cab. Great, that's easy, we got a couple of those. And they're like, we wanna burn it to the ground. Even better. Then they wanted us to bring it to a studio the next day to shoot it in the studio. So it would be an in the field thing and then in the studio thing. We're like, okay, that's a little weird, but we can totally do that. The key to opening a film car company is always saying, I can totally do that. And then hang up the phone and go, how do we do that? And we figure it out. So we got the car, but they called, and it's very typical for photo shoots because the artiste, you know, photographer has the idea the day before and oh, what I really want is this. And they call us up and they go, you gotta get us this. So we had about a couple days to prep this thing. So we had our crew strip out the engine, you know, pull out the fuel tank, the usual, but we left the interior in to burn. Cause we told them, we said, you got two choices. We can build it as just a husk of a car and we can build it so fire comes out of it and you'll have continuous fire as long as you want, but it won't look terribly great, but you can do the rest of it in post and kind of really flame it out and smoke it out. Or we can light it on fire and you're gonna have about five minutes of real beautiful flames before it turns into a toxic ball of smoke. And of course they picked the five minutes of glory. So we're like, okay. So we got it ready and brought it over. We had a fantastic group of guys who were part-time firefighters and they brought over a tanker truck for us and we had a big field in New Jersey. The model is there and she's dressed up like a reporter and she's got a microphone like she's reporting this burning cab on fire in the middle of a field. The photographer's all like, good, good, good. He's like, okay, we're gonna do this, this, this. We're like, okay, we're all set. You know, we told him the timeline. It only gonna last about five minutes. Models and ready, she's in costume. She's got the Gucci shoes and the expensive shirt and whatever else on. Her outfit's probably worth 15 times what the cab's worth. How we do it is we set it up with uh, basically pie tins hanging inside of it and they're filled with gasoline. And there's a trigger and a couple of things and it works beautifully. It spreads the fire pretty evenly behind it. And we light it on fire. We light it, thing starts catching, fire comes. It looks beautiful. He's like, okay, now back up. And she backs up and she's doing her thing, and, you know? And he's like, no, 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 closer, come on closer. And she's like, okay. And she's just, you know, she's the meat puppet. She does what she's told and she backs up and she backs up. A camera has a very limited depth of field. What it can see how far away things are is really not necessary to push the model that close. But he's like, no, back up, no, back up, no, back up. And you can see you're getting more and more Nervous, like, oh, okay, yeah. It's getting more forced and more forced. No, 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 no. Really, back up. You have to back up. And he's screaming at her. So she backs up the last way. We could feel the heat. And this is hot enough that literally the, the windshield is melting in on the dashboard. Like this is the kind of heat this thing is generating. And it's beautiful. A huge plume of fire and smoke going up into the sky. You could see her at the closest possible moment, she's, he, he just barks at her and she goes, huh, and she backs up a last foot and boom, boom, and she jumps on the ground. And I'm like, oops, we had forgotten in the rush to do things to remove the airbags out of the steering wheel and the passenger side. And they had proceeded to explode in the fire. Just to back up a little bit, in order to keep it safe, burning taxi in a, a field, uh, we made sure they hose down everything. So it's damp, bordering on just a muddy field, and we put the car in it. That way, the heat really, radiant heat from a car like this burning, if that it is green grass, we'll light it on fire. Like it will catch it on fire. Everything's soaking wet. <laughs> when the airbags go off, she takes a header into the mud, and it's quite literally like, something out of a movie where she's perfectly clean and this goes and then sits up and it's like the outline of mud and crap all over her and you just see it dripping 
into her $1,000 blouse, across her $4,000 belts, and into her $15,000 shoes. And the staff, the photography staff, just screamed out, mortified about it. Because, of course, they're worried about the clothes. They care less about her. Like, she could have lost a finger. They wouldn't, they wouldn't matter as long as the, like, Yves Saint Laurent or whatever the hell she's wearing is okay. We can get it back to the collector or the owner or the designer. They got to get these clothes back intact. And they run in on her, and it's not her safety. They immediately start looking at her clothes and her shoes and everything. And they're trying to clean her off and get her back up. And he's like, no, no, we keep going, we keep going. And she's like, ah. And the fire is now turning to toxic smoke. And we're like, we're done. That's, that's it. That's, you got your, f he's like, no, 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 we, we continue. I'm like, that's not healthy. That she's inhaling like burning foam and vinyl and stuff now. It's horrible. Again, they're not even concerned about her. They're trying to clean her clothes as fast as possible. And finally, they were not getting their act together, which was untypical for a photo crew. And I give the nod to the Staten Island fire guys, and they're like, Psh! and out comes the, it just, <laughs> they hose the whole thing down, and it's done. It is absolutely done. And they got a beautiful shot. I mean, there is a, a fantastic photograph he got out of it. But they're like, what was the noise? And I'm like, uh, suspension, the tires, suspension was falling. The, the tires must have blown the tires because the tires they might melt eventually and they do blow. But we take most of the air out of them so you don't get an explosion. <laughs> but, I mean, it was like two gunshots going off. and Everybody freaked out. The next day, we're supposed to deliver this thing to this studio, photo studio, in, on the west side in Manhattan. And it has an elevator where it's got to take it up a couple of floors and then we've got to push it into the studio. And we're like, this thing stinks. Like, we want to, you know, you might be aware that it, it reeks of toxic chemicals. We put a new set of tires on it and we push it in and it's just stanking up the elevator. And the elevator is literally like two inches longer than the car and it's this creaky old cargo elevator. And we go up, we open the doors, we push it in. And as soon as we push it in, the air just from the elevator just blows in. And all these people are like, what is that smell? Like, oh my, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And we're like, it's the car, it's your car, the car's here. And like, no, 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 no. And the photographer's like, no, no, we have to get the shot, we have to get the shot. Bring it in, and he's like, oh, you have to get rid of the car, you have to get rid of the smell. I'm like, sorry, uh, I can't get rid of the smell. Like, it's like, I can't, poof, it's disappeared, right? What had happened was, these are all closed, windowless studios, an old warehouse type of building, and they're basically moving air from one room to another with this ventilation system. So essentially, we're, all this toxic smell is moving through the entire building until the owners of the building, the guys running the place, came in the door and they are, what is going on in here? And I get that thing out of here. And, you know, we're not going to say no to the client. So we're looking at the client and he's trying to explain to them that it's the art of the picture and we have to see the melting glass and all this. And they're like, no, sorry. Uh, it's that, or we, you know, your deposit and everything like this, you're, you're done. So uh, we took the car away, and that was the end of the burning taxi. Going somewhere in a hurry, ma'am? Let me explain your options. Never mind, I got this. Dot ticketclinic.com. <laughs>